So finally, starting 25 June onwards, competitive swimming training will be allowed, though still a lot of people are skeptical about how safe it really is, especially in terms of sharing a swimming pool with other individuals. And um, there still isn't enough research or studies on um, transmission or COVID-19 transmission in chlorinated swimming pools. So let's hear it from the Secretary General of Amateur Swimming Union Malaysia, Asum, Mei Chen, on how swimming organizations can convince those involved, including the students and the parents, um, of how safe it really is to conduct training in the time soonest. All right, hi Mei Chen, thank you so much for joining us. So um, let me just start with my first question. Uh, the swimming activities, previously it was denied from operating and um, finally it is, but um, in your perspective or, or in your opinion, how do you view swimming training to be safe from uh, preventing COVID-19 transmission? Well, all sports were denied, you know, not only swimming, right? Mm -hmm. uh, due to the concerns of the spreading of the uh, coronavirus. So finally, we are relieved that uh, swimming is allowed with uh, adhering to the university. Well, viewing swimming to be safe, well, at the moment, there's actually no case yet to state that swimming is not safe. Mm -hmm. Swimming in treated chlorinated water, uh, ensuring that swimmers are in good health, uh, probably avoiding gathering, sharing of food, drinks, sharing of swimming equipment, every little bit of this in the SOP helps. And hopefully, you know, there won't be any uh, cluster or anything coming from the swimming pool. So definitely the organizations and the companies, the swimming companies, uh, play a, a huge role in uh, determining uh, the SOPs. So how will these organizations convince the parents and the students that it's actually safe? And how will, what are the steps taken to really avoid new clusters from happening? Fortunately, fortunately, there was never a cluster from swimming. You know, um, and with this new norm for the past three months, I believe everyone has gotten used to the new lifestyle. Automatically, we feel unsafe and we move away when someone is very near us. Mm -hmm. So with this, we apply to the swimming lessons. Um, they are more cautious, you know, with the social distancing, uh, non-gathering, you know, and no hi-fi and uh, no uh, keeping away from each other and no, no uh, mingling or whatever. They will be more cautious. And hopefully by that, uh, parents understand. Kids are very smart. You know, they, they learn. I'm sure these three months, the kids are, are, are better, uh, what do you call that, uh, more disciplined probably than some of those adults we see at the coffee shop. So, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm sure they learn. Kids learn faster than adults. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a very interesting point. Um, mm. So, I believe that uh, about a week plus ago, um, the SOPs have been presented. So, what, what are the, the SOPs, maybe a little bit of the SOPs from um, ASUM and the National Sports Council and the Sports Ministry? What, what are these uh, SOPs? Could you maybe list them down? Yeah, so apart from the general important SOP, uh, like temperature check, registering with my Sajatra, you know. Yeah. So during training, we would have um, more strict and more specific uh, SOPs, like don't come to the pool too early, like before, you know, before they used to come, probably the parents drop them half an hour early so that they can chit chat with their friends before the lesson, you know, mm -hmm. and, and all those. So not now anymore. It's not the place for socializing. Uh, they have to come showered, uh, fully attired to train uh, and uh, adhering to the uh, social distancing. Excuse yourself if you need to use the bathroom. Uh, do not spit into the overflow drain. And uh, after training, uh, a quick rinse at the shower nearby. You dry off and then you leave. And of course, parents nowadays, they don't gather as well. We just uh, drop off. Previously, parents are also having uh, a mingling session of their own, you know. Uh, it's like a, a little uh, one-hour picnic while waiting for their children to finish off their classes. So, no more. No more. Yeah. No more of that. Things are definitely going to be different uh, from now on. 
Yeah. But uh, this, this is an additional question. Uh, will there be limiting um, numbers of students allowed at one time? And also another thing about the age group, is there going to be a limit on that? Like maybe Because I believe that there are kids as young as, say, four years old or even younger that have, um, I mean, that go to swimming uh, training. So will there be a limit for these students on attending classes uh, in the meantime? So you're talking about, you're referring to the learn to swim, uh, learn to swim classes, you, you're talking about four years old. Yes. Uh, yes, we discourage. We discourage uh, new learners uh, because non-contact is still the number one rule. Uh, so no new learners and uh, children who are very young, uh, from, you know, who cannot take instructions yet, um, and they're still very playful. So this will be a discourage uh, to, to the swimming lessons. Of course, we also do not want to teach adults that are way too old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is again uh, another high risk uh, factor on that. So basically, we, we, we are trying to discourage all the swim schools uh, to take new students. So those students who has been with them knows how to swim water confidence um, and they can actually teach using the kickboard, using the floating boards, the noodles, you know, and they do not need to touch them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can continue with the lessons. The global situation right now, it's very uncertain and um, we don't see COVID-19 ending or disappearing anytime soon. So what do you think is the future of competitive swimming, especially locally for our local athletes? to those who are going to compete internationally, what, what is the future of that, that? Well, currently our focus is only on in training. I suppose that's what most federations are doing all over the world. With travel, uh, with travel restrictions especially, we might be able only to plan for competition probably, I don't know, end December or early January. Mm -hmm. um, as for ASUM, we wish to organize the uh, a Malaysian Open Diving Championship before the Diving World Cup in February 2021. Okay. Because this will provide our divers the feel of competing again after such a long layoff. Mm -hmm. you know? We also like to apply to the Ministry for approval to host the 63rd Malaysia Open Swimming Championship. This championship was supposed to be in April this year, but because of the COVID, we have to cancel it. Uh, again, probably in January, because both this FINA Diving World Cup and this Malaysia Swimming Championship is actually the, uh, they are qualifying events to the Olympics. So mm. that will be actually, that would actually benefit our swimmers and divers. Yeah. Mm. So, so the, those um, really big competitions, they are going to be uh, set for next year. And um, the students or the competitors must be, mm, it must be tough for them because um, the trainings are, has been on halt. So they need to get back in the, the, the momentum. So do you think that things will start to get better now that uh, the competitive swimming is allowed? Yeah, I believe that most of the... Um States, state swimmers, those in the competitive swimming, they would have lost their fitness level by a, by a certain extent. Yeah. So they will have to get back to the fitness level. Uh, for the states, uh, they would have Sukma to look forward to in March. Uh, that is already planned for in March. So that's the competition that they are looking forward to. So with the Malaysian Open, hopefully they can come in and participate. Uh, so that um, that will give them the feel and the momentum to get back into competition um, stage, you know. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, I really hope the best for um, all of our local, our, our athletes, and also those who have not yet reached that point. Also, I hope the safety and, um, yeah, especially safety for everyone. I hope you do. Yes. Thank you very much for sharing with us, and I hope you have a great day. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thank you.